might know me, yeah, that's fair But we're bull talkers, so It shouldn't take long to get us there Is there some place we can go And play a game of truth or dare And I choose both cause it's been a while Since I've had human connection Made someone smile who really wanted my attention I know that you're not drinking now Gotta try to find another excuse to hang out said too much that seems to be my signature touch can i see you dinner breakfast lunch because next year everything i say is boring and we've limited time to get to hear your whole life story i know that you're not drinking now gotta try to find another excuse to hang out It's a good thing we're bull talkers. I know that you're not drinking now. Gotta try to find another excuse to hang out. I'm just smoking weed at my friend Ashley's house. It's in Midtown, and I know it's not your crowd, but I am only in town for three days before I get a and go back to LA if you wanna run around I wanna run around, do you wanna run around with me? I know that you're not drinking now It's a good thing we're bull talkers I know that you're not drinking now But I'm only in town for three days Yeah, I'm only in town for three days If you wanna run around, I wanna It's a good thing we're full talkers. Well Welcome to Live from the Space at 100 Taylor, and today we have Susie Chisholm. Look at you, fashionable per usual. I mean, there's he nothing. Says this. I'm like, these are my basics. This is this is your basics. But Susie, I have to, you know, I mean, just listening to you play that song, it's incredible. And we were talking off camera, like you have so many songs at this point. And congratulations on Pobrecita, by the Thank way, you. which is out now, it's and it's wonderful. Thank you. Thirty-three so minutes of just awesomeness. But I have to ask you, Susie, you know. I think, I think you answered the essential question with this, with this album, with this EP, and it's the essential question that you answer is, you're an extremely serious musician that already has a lot of extremely serious output. And, and like you, you prove it here, like your repertoire, the experience that you've, that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years, it just shines through. And I guess the question, Susie, is, no, it's, it's amazing. And I guess the question is, there's so much shit coming out now, so much music, and most sure. of them is not very good. I don't listen to. Is it a little frustrating? Music. Yeah, is it a little, why? Because it's just too much, right? I just don't have a lot of free time. Right. If I have my headphones in like nine times out of 10, I'm like listening to 
just like a voice memo of something that I wrote yeah. and like looking for the parts that bother me so I can fix them. Amazing. But well, th that, that's the point. Like, is it frustrating a little bit as a musician nowadays, Susie, you know, to kind of rise above so much noise out here, just out here in Nashville. There's like hundreds of songs coming out every week. It's a lot of stuff out here, a lot of good stuff. Like, you know, I put a record out and then ever since I'm noticing so many amazing albums coming out and around that time and even this week, there's been like a yeah. lot of good stuff. So um, I try not to be necessarily frustrated by the amount of content or whatever that's around, um, but I try not to like pay attention to it because the industry itself, like, you know, you have to work really, really hard or be really lucky or a combination of yeah. both. You know, I think yeah. you hear this in almost every interview ever about music is just like, you know, there's no one path to like how it could happen. So um, you just kind of got to like, you just, you got to stay the course, you know, trust yeah. the process and don't overthink it. And I try to appreciate that there's a lot of good stuff around me and that, you know, no matter what, as long as I'm just doing me, yeah. you know, it doesn't really matter what, every, what everybody else sounds And like. you're doing an incredible journey. Like you remind me, you know, who about Cheryl Crow? Oh, you know, she, you. she grew up in Missouri. I I mean, and her journey is very similar to yours. She grew up in Missouri. She was like a school teacher doing odd jobs, retail, restaurant, all this good stuff. And in the meantime, she was putting out this killer output right. that was just kind of like ready to like bubble to the mainstream. Yeah. Um, and she blew up like in her 30s. Yeah. You know, a lot of similarities uh, during research with you. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's incredible. You know, it's almost like a blessing, I think, the journey that you're taking, you know? Do you ever think that, like, the fact that it hasn't come so quickly? I think about this on the daily, you know, because... Yeah. Um, so I just put out this new record called Pobrecita, and there is a title track, and I'm gonna play it here in a few minutes. But the first line of the song is, you've never heard of her, she's still undiscovered. And I really like, I am gonna try to really enjoy the moments in my life, because like, what if I am discovered? Yeah. In, you know, someday when I play that song, it won't have the same feeling that it does right now. Mm. So I'm trying to like really appreciate like, okay, while I'm singing this as an undiscovered artist, maybe it's just this precious little secret that just we have right now, you know, that could break, that could break out someday. Um, and in thinking about that, like if, if I do get discovered at some point, um, I'll just be so grateful that I think naturally I will feel grateful that that's the way that it happened, you yeah. know? So. And the funny thing is, I mean, people outside of Nashville don't know this, but you're like an institution here at this point. Like when I people, am. yeah, when people say your name, you know, like you're like an East like Nashville. Yeah, it's like, you know, all the major, you know, musicians in town, like you're a well-known name. So um, that, that's got to count for something, right? That, you know, you're respected by the I'll who's who. I didn't know. Abs absolutely, Susie. You know this. I didn't know. Yeah. But, um, so yeah. So, I mean, it's a great album. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been really fun, you know, like it's just been this thing that sounds in my own head and um, now I'm getting a lot of feedback and that's yeah. like a really fun part of the process, you know. People are calling it all kinds of things and comparing it to all kinds of people. And I just, I think uh, this part's really fun. Yeah, yeah, you were recently, some major magazine compared you to like a country Courtney Love, was that it? Isn't that silly because it kind of makes sense? Yeah, um, it makes perfect I sense. I think if Courtney Love made a country record, um, which is what this review said about mine, um, Adobe and Teardrops, hello. Uh, <laughs> when they said that, I thought about it and I was like, man, if Courtney Love made a country album, it would be totally different than this though, because she's so like, right. she's just so is who she is. And yeah. so I, I mean, I would love to hear that yeah. record, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it, I hear it. It's like when uh, Kylie Minogue did her Nashville record and it's Isn't like, it crazy? And it's like, what, what is that? There are Kylie Minogue songs where I hear them like, b-sides or whatever and right. i'm like who is this and i never would have guessed it that yeah. it was her and totally. then i'm like oh my god that makes perfect sense at the same time because yeah. it is her <laughs> and susie you know you're obviously you're an amazing songwriter thank you so much incredible but you know what i love about the ep is just like your riffs and people must have heard it in the first song and and, and in, in your previous interview with us like just your riffs and your sonic you know you're creating like a sonic landscape in your songs that is really unique you know, it's very, where did that come from, Susie? Because it's not the traditional, you know, bridge, bridge, chorus. It's like, just like a very, is this in your head? Like, where, where do these notes sounds come from? It's just messing around. Okay. <laughs> I'm just messing around. You know, I really, um, I love, I love making music. And at this point in my career, a lot of my experience with music is just me alone at home. And, you know, we did all kind of go through a period of solitude recently. Yeah. Um, 
in solidarity. And so I've had a lot of experiences and also with uh, my bands breaking up and things where I pour my sorrow, I pour my joy, I pour everything over my guitar. And so it's just something I really love to do and I just fuck around. Just <laughs> and then around. I sense. stumble upon something. And you know, if you had heard Talkers, I wish I could find the voice memo for you because I have it. It had a different progression when I first wrote the yeah. lyrics. It sounded totally different. And uh, then one day, like the day after I finalized the lyrics to Talkers, I was just messing around and played that on accident. And I was like, take it to the song right now right. before I forget it. And it fit. So yeah, it sounded totally different before I wrote that riff. Incredible. Speaking of that, of course, you love Susie. Um, I was thinking about like little you in Nevada, you know, little, little Susanna yeah. just running around. When you were dreaming of getting out of town, like who were the who were you looking at in the posters in your bedroom? Like who were your guiding lights? There were a lot of them, and yeah. they cover a lot of different yeah, uh, so you can see everything a lot of different ground. Like it's pretty crazy. I yeah. majorly was influenced by that film, that thing you do. Like I just got like a trampoline, and so it's like I have a stage. I learned all the songs, you and like think about how many artists are on Playtone Records. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're all different genres and stuff, and That's I learned Hanks, all of right? those songs. That's yeah, nice movie, right? it's so good. And so I mean, I started doing music long before that, but things like that, like yeah. I loved so many different sounds. My dad, um, when I was very young, he noticed mm -hmm. that I enjoyed singing. And he went up to a music store in Reno, which was like an hour and a half away at the time. Now they have like a new highway where you can get there in like 50 minutes. You didn't have that growing up. That would have been like a game changer <laughs> out in the desert, you know. But anyways, he was up in Reno and he came back and it was, it was like a record that had a book of lyrics. Have I told you this before? No. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, this is no, sounding no, familiar, but... if you but, haven't, if you have, like, for the record, um, but no, you haven't. Essentially, it was a, a, like, how to sing record, and it had a book of lyrics and kind of sheet music, so you could look at the notes as well, but you panned it a certain way on your record player, and when you did that, um, it took, it became, like, karaoke, but it had all these different songs, and the one that I, there was a few that I, like, did over and over and over again. I could karaoke perform them with this book in my living room, um, there was Marilyn Monroe's Diamonds Are Our Girl's Best Friends. Nice. That was like one of them. Cool. And we were big Beatles heads, a lot of Tom Petty in my house, Buddy Holly, uh, Roy Orbison. Yeah. But I loved In Sync, like Team In Sync. All the way, <laughs> All the way Justin for me. Else. Justin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had those posters um, on the wall. And I really loved. Um, no doubt when they came out, obviously, I think it made the voice that I already had was suddenly like socially acceptable to be yeah. weird because Gwen Stefani, you know, and like Alanis Morissette and people like that, Sheryl Crow, were all around. So I felt like I want to I wanna do that. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a lot. It was a lot of different artists. I also really loved Destiny's Child and I loved um, bands like Green Day and No Effects and yeah. like, I don't know, Rancid. And Amazing. So I yeah. don't know, I a little bit of everything. Music, all this comes through. It's pretty incredible. It's all perspective, yeah, you know. It's awesome, awesome Susie. And, uh, you know, you came back to Nashville. We've talked about this, but, you know, you, you've had an interesting, like, kind of, like, cycle in, in Nashville because you left and then you came back. And in some ways it sucks that I left because why, Nashville's, why? like, such a... It is kind of a 10-year town. You hit your stride and people, you know, whether you change your sound a million times or you stay too, true to it, you're able to kind of show your community in about 10 years. If you're a serious musician, that seems to, like run true for a lot of people yeah. and um i bailed for a second like i went out to la for two years and is when it, I came it back, does it mean like i'm not quitting is that like part of it like the 10 years um i don't know i just have heard a lot of people in town say this yeah. is a 10 year town yeah, you know what is, i mean and it just right. um it seems to be that way mm -hmm. but so i kind of did i have a fear at moments um which i need to just like totally mute in my own mind but i have had the fear that like in some ways I had to start over. I came back, there's a bunch of new kids here. And now they've got a little bit of leverage on me in the current scene because they've been actively doing it. And I'm back and I'm back after a pandemic and people, I run into people all the time who are like, are you still doing music? And I'm like, that's who I am. Like, yeah, but there are also a lot of people stoked to see me and they're like, I heard, you know, the stuff that you've been putting out right. since going solo. But that's so. what I'm saying. I think, you know, I, I mean, I came here now three years ago almost and, Word. and, and you, we're like, you're like an institution from my perspective. It's like, oh, Susie Chisholm, like, you know, without knowing your story. So even though you left, 
I don't think it's like you started from zero. Well, it's great that I came back with songs that aren't, to me, they aren't just like the typical, not that I think I would have been writing the typical Nashville music, um, but I just went out there and changed my story for a minute. And I That's think fun. that was really good for me. I needed to, um, I had just gone through a lot, you know, from it, so many, Love, so mostly, many stories shit, I could yeah. tell you, you know, in my 20s. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, I did like, Bam, all my, I was coming out to Nashville before I was 21, and the second I turned 21, I moved here because I could get more work. Mm -hmm. um, I was flying out for session work and stuff before, living in Reno in college. Yeah. And so um, the second I turned 21, I dropped out of college and I moved here. Um, and so, I don't know, it's, it's weird that I was here for my 20s, and then right then at the tail end, I was like, I'm going to LA for a minute, and I was there for two years, but I turned 30 there. And now I'm back with like this, it's totally a different experience coming back here. I have new friends. I have new love in my life. And it's yeah. really cool, man. Like, I'm stoked to see what Nashville's been doing. It's been... So um, you're excited to work, like, the direction of the city? I, in some ways, like, I miss old Nashville. It's really, really sad for me. Like, I could even, I could cry. <laughs> like, I'll try not to. Um, but it's sad for me that those venues that are so historic that I love to play, that they're gone. And, um, you know, I go to send booking emails sometimes, and I'm like, well... Another one bites the dust, you know, like removing right. them from my right. my contact list. And I'm just going back to like a handful of old trustees now when I have a show that a showcase I want to put together or yeah. something. So that part is really hard for me. It's sure. so sad. It's like, what what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Yeah, changes, but, changes, um, well, and sometimes I'm like Nashville kind of in some ways is like acting like L.A. and New York. Like a mini? Like a mini, and I don't mean like I'm not like a Nashville hater. Like, I love you, <laughs> I love you, my community, oh, yeah. you know. Um, but I'm like, I just left there, so right. it's it is weird. Kind of, yeah. the energy has shifted. A lot of people are coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. so and they've yeah. been coming since yeah. oh my gosh, CMT was on a high, you know. <laughs> they started pouring in. Okay. Susie, when you write a song, I don't know, like Happy Anniversary, I mean, it's just amazing the way that you tap into these characters, whether it's your experience or like someone else. How do you do that, Susie? Because do you think that mm -hmm. it seems like they're, they are characters? I always wonder this. Because to me, I'm like, this just sounds like that's just how the song goes. You okay. know what I mean? Sure. Well, let me first answer and then you tell me. I'm interviewing you now. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay. I love it. Um, I go back and forth with your songs okay. because but but it's also like so I know some details about your life and I'm like that makes sense but there's others that remind me of like you know Bruce Springsteen darkness on the edge of town you create I don't know like happy anniversary <laughs> I don't know like it, really? I don't know or maybe like you embellish parts of you uh, and you make them like really like magical realism I don't know I don't know what it is but I don't know. Uh, that's just how the song goes Jamie yeah <laughs> well where does this come from like how do you tap into that um because it is more than a country, like, you know, you broke my heart, I'm gonna have a shot of tequila. But at the same time, you know, there are songs that I hear, the Beatles, yeah. right? Everybody, everybody knows the Beatles. Right. Everybody should love the Beatles. That's a contrary opinion in some circles, but, um, you know, the lyric, I'm in love with her and I feel fine. And it's like, it's so beautiful, the simplicity of it. Yeah. Have we had this conversation? No, but is there a right. lot of deja vu in this room? You're right. They have like obli do of that. But like, you what know exactly <laughs> what he's saying when he says, "I feel fine." It's like relief. It's like, oh my gosh, the worries. It's to me, it's like the worries are, are gone when I'm with this person, yeah. and it's so light and simple. And I'm such a wordy bitch. Like I'm such a wordy motherfucker. I go to write a song, and I'm just like, here it is. And so sometimes I really. I wonder, and you know, I could go jump into the whole world of uh, co-writing, I guess, if I wanted to figure out how to write the formulaic country song. Um, that's just, I just write poetry for the most part, yeah. I think. Um, and there are artists that that do like a pop structure, et cetera, that I would love to work with. Um, like I just, on the way here in my Uber, mm -hmm. there was a song he was playing and it said it was Babyface and, um, and another artist, I can't remember her name. I had never heard of her or this song. And I was like, is this new? And the Uber driver's like, yeah, it just came out. And I'm like, new baby face. I want to work with baby face. Like, that would be cool, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. For right now, this project has just been kind of me at home saying it like it is. Yeah. Um, and me trying to spend my time 
focused on my career. Maybe that's why I'm writing so much right now, as I'm just like, I want when things take off for me, should I be blessed enough for that to happen, I want to like, if I have to go on the road for two years, touring the world or, you know, that part of it, I've got enough songs to come back and make another album and sure. like, I don't have to be worried like, oh my gosh, how am I going to make the next record? Like yeah. I've got, I've got a lot of material. So right. Amazing. I don't really know what the motivation is, boredom or, you know, goals or yeah. a, a combination of both. But Well, let me leave, leave you with this because I think you're going to play another song for us, Susie. But, um, you, you seem like in a really great place right now. And, and uh, you know, obviously, like, you know, disclaimer, we're kind of pals outside of camera, but you, like, your energy is super, like, amazing right now. And Thank you. I feel pretty good. And, you know, some days, mm -hmm. we musicians, we work um, yeah. a lot of jobs to pay for these projects and yeah. things. And so there are some days when I'm really, really tired and I get home and I cry in the shower. Well, you that, know, like, it's like, like... What do you do? do you, it, are you meditating? Like, what, what are you um, doing? I've not had any alcohol mm -hmm. for, I mean, I don't know if that's, I don't know yeah. what my life plan is, how long this will continue, you know. Uh -huh. um, I don't, I'm what not like the biggest example of sobriety, but um, my last drink was at my album release party. Okay, that was like two months ago. That was over two months ago. Yeah. And so I, while I was drinking it, it was just kind of like, what am I numbing myself for? And there are parts that are a little, not like I drank so much that it's like all hazy, but like a little fuzzy yeah. where what if I could have memories of that night where they'd be so sharp and who knows if I could have played a better set or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I am a perfectionist. So like yeah. maybe well, some of that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but I just woke up the day, you know, on official release day, I woke up the next day after the party and I was like, I wanted, the plan would have been normally to like go and have champagne and celebrate at brunch or something. And I just picked up a guitar instead and I haven't yeah. really been drinking. So it's been cool. It's wow. great. There's a lot of um, sober community around me that you don't yeah. even really realize. And that's, um, I don't even think that it's like trending. I think people are just starting to realize they can use their platform for good. Yeah. They can be the best versions of themselves. They yeah. can live without regret or like feeling like they said something dumb or compromising or to texts. their integrity. Yeah, or texts. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> text it's time. crazy. And I am living with none of that now, <laughs> which is pretty like scary. Cause you. when you, you <laughs> strip away the tomfoolery and like, yeah. I'm noticing like all my body pains and yeah. stuff now. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, I had really like dulled some of that. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's fun. Congrats. But thank you. Yeah. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Well, there you go. So thank you for your time. You want to take us away with a song, Susie? Pobrecita. Fuck yeah. I feel like I had to play this one for you. I love you Pobrecita, like, <laughs> and I've loved it for like years. I remember you, 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 like a year ago, you were doing a residency. I actually wrote this one in LA, and I did play it. Yeah. At the residency. The first time I heard it, I'm like, so good. Anyway. I'm glad you like it, and it was really fun too on the recording. Um, it's the only song on the album that has another guitar player on yeah. it and Alex Munoz played on it and like he's so good he's just so good like he's just so good yeah, so we in the process of that like it already I already had kind of the bones of it like that's already how it went um but we started tracking and we basically just started like passing the guitar back and forth ended up kind of being the process like he would get a little tired of just um sitting there he engineered it um and so i'd be like okay you take the guitar next or whatever and we just passed it back and forth until the ending of it was done so um when i hear it i'm like that was that was so cool, was cool. so anyways this is pobrecita buckle up because <laughs> it's it's kind of like a long operatic one <laughs> She's still undiscovered, but she found herself recently. She went to California, it did wonders for her, at least from the way that it seems. But the man that taught her how to sing took care of his business impersonating the king, may he rest in peace. Well, I grew up near Reno, love a good casino. I've been to North and I El Camino with Priscilla and Dado, the whole family. Oh, were those the best days of my life? 
at the Nevada, California line. There's a swimming pool in two places one time. And in the hotel lobby, karaoke hobbies love when I do pay its decline. And we do it to stay in alive like we were at the time. Oh, pobre Sita. Can't believe he would leave. Yeah, they've been leaving since my early days. Will I ever get more than nice to meet ya before you bury me somewhere beneath ya? Pobrecita, he was the last person I taught everything to. It was the worst thing that I'll put him through. Will I ever not think of you? If you want to know the truth, there once was a boy nearly let me destroy him. It's the nicest thing that someone can do for you. If you never feel like you mattered before him, that's over for him anyway. Now when I'm not counting days between drinks, it's the ways that he thinks that he is always right. And it may not seem like the most tragic thing, but I never felt more like a wife than I did at that time. And I may never again in this life. Oh, pobrecita, can't believe he would leave. Yeah, they've been leaving since my early days. Will I ever get more than nice to meet ya? Before you bury me somewhere beneath ya. Oh, pobrecita, he was the last person I taught everything to. It was the worst thing that I'll put him through. Will I ever not think of you? I want to know the truth. He was the last person I taught everything to. It was the worst thing that I'll put him through before he buried me somewhere beneath them. Pobrecita. For you, baby girl. <laughs> so fucking good. Thank you. You're the Hell yeah. You're the Disney's.